Hello. This presentation is on our paper High-Speed Masking for Polynomial Comparison in Lattice-Based Key Encapsulation Mechanisms. My name is Florian Bachel and this is joint work with Clara Paglia-Longa, Tobias Oder, Tobias Schneider and Tim Gnesen. The outline of this talk is as follows. I will give a short introduction into the relevant topics. Then I will present our mask comparison algorithm, give a short analysis of the security and uh, the correctness. I will provide some performance figures, some details about the security evaluation, and finally give a conclusion. So the concept of site channel attacks has been around uh, for several years. And uh, it basically works as follows. We have a cryptographic device which performs operations on uh, sensitive data and an attacker measures the side channel, for example, the power consumption or the electromagnetic emanation using an oscilloscope to create the side channel traces on the right. And these are then evaluated using statistical tools to recover the secret, for example, the key of the device. And to counteract this kind of attack, there are several approaches, for example, hiding and masking, which we will focus on in the rest of this talk. And in masking, the sensitive data or sensitive variable is split into multiple shares. And this can be done either by Boolean masking, where the sensitive variable X is split into several XI using a Boolean addition, or we can use arithmetic masking where we split the data using addition with some modulus. And then we compute on this securely shared data and combine it later again. And uh, the security of the scheme relies on the idea that an attacker cannot reconstruct the secret without having access to all of the shares, which is assumed to be hard. In our paper, we're interested in applying um, masking countermeasures to post-quantum cryptography, specifically key encapsulation mechanisms that are based on lattices. And uh, many of these lattice-based CAMs rely on the Fujisaki-Okamoto transform to achieve the required CCA security, that is security against a chosen ciphertext attacker. And one of the parts of this transform is a comparison step in which the re-encrypted plain text is compared with the input ciphertext. So this comparison is very simple and fast in the unmasked case, but if we apply masking to uh, the decapsulation, then it becomes uh, very expensive, especially at higher orders. So even for the first order case, we can look at new hope which we used as a benchmark in our paper. And the first order secure New Hope implementation can be found in Oda et al, which uh, takes around 25 million clock cycles on an ARM Cortex-M4 microcontroller. And the comparison alone is around 480,000 cycles. This isn't a lot compared to the overall runtime, but it's important to note that the comparison in the reference only works for first order masking. So uh, there's no easy way to extend it to higher orders. Um, there's a general approach, which is based on arithmetic to Boolean conversion. And uh, this approach can be extended to higher orders, but it takes around 4 million clock cycles. So almost a fifth of the um, overall scheme. And as we will show later, uh, it gets worse quite fast. So our contribution is a new algorithm for mass comparison, uh, which is secure at high masking orders. It has a low runtime and low randomness requirements, even at these high orders. Uh, we provided theoretical security proof and the probing model and give uh, some performance figures for different parameter sets. And we also provide a practical uh, second order security evaluation using test vector leakage assessment. So the overall algorithm we're trying to protect is the CCA secure decapsulation uh, using the Fujisaki Okamoto transform. 
And in this case, we looked at New Hope. And the algorithm looks like uh, this. On the left, we have the input A prime, which is a polynomial. And this is then put to the CPA secure decryption function. Um, and the output is given to a random oracle G, which is usually instantiated using a hash function. And also to the re-encryption, uh, which I mentioned earlier, uh, which generates another polynomial, which we labeled A. And then these two polynomials, A and A prime, are put into the comparison. And only if the comparison shows that A and A prime are the same, the output is processed further. As I said, we focus on this comparison step. And again, we have two inputs here. We have the polynomial A prime. Uh, this consists of k coefficients. And we have the output of the CPA encryption A, which is also a polynomial consisting of k coefficients. And it's important to note that these must be shared to achieve security because uh, the uh, polynomial A depends on the secret key SK. And the sharing used uh, is typically arithmetic because um, of the lattice structure that is used in the CPA decryption and encryption. So related work, um, which also studied the masking of the comparison step, um, can be classified in, in two types. First, we have the efficient comparison by order et al, uh, which is first order only. And we have the arithmetic to Boolean conversion-based approach, which yeah, can work at higher masking orders, but it has quadratic complexity in number of shares and therefore gets expensive if we increase the number of shares to increase the masking order. Now, our proposed algorithm works on the core idea that instead of comparing only one coefficient at a time, we pool them into sets of coefficients which we compare uh, all at once. Again, the input are the arithmetically shared coefficients AI and the unshared or public coefficients AI prime. And the output should be true if the polynomials match, that is that all a prime i are equal to the respective a i. So the first step is splitting the coefficients into x sets of size l each. So such that the first set contains a1 to a l and the second set contains a l plus 1 to a2 l and so on. And then we calculate a sum, a mask sum on these sets. And uh, please note that we need fresh randomness here. So the R1i and R2i are uh, random values. But also note that the randomness is constant over the shares. So we need two random words per coefficient, but this is independent of the number of shares. After we calculated this shared sum, we can unmask it just using addition. And um, yeah, also not all uh, arithmetic operations here are um, modulo Q, but I left it out um, for readability. Then we can rewrite the sum BM as the sum over AI plus N times R1I times R2I. And uh, as there are no uh, shares in here, so this is a sum over the unshared coefficients, we can calculate the same sum for the unshared polynomial. So we have bm and bm prime. And the final step is just comparing these unshared sums. To see the complexity of our algorithm, we can look again at the equation for uh, the unshared sums bm. And we see two sums. The inner sum is over the number of coefficients and the outer sum is over the number of shares. So 
the complexity is linear in the number of coefficients and the number of shares. And the required randomness is also linear in the number of coefficients, but as I said before, it's independent on, of the number of shares. So if we increase the masking order, we don't need more randomness. So to analyze the correctness, we need first to show that uh, valid ciphertext actually passed the comparison, and this is easy to see. And the second part is uh, showing that invalid ciphertexts are actually rejected. And we show in a paper that the collision probability for one of the uh, sums, so for one of the sets, is 1 over q. And the collision probability for all of the sets is q to the minus x, where x is the number of sets. So we can set the number of sets uh, depending on the uh, collision probability that we are comfortable with. So for New Hope, we set the number of sets to x equals 16. And um, this gives us a low collision probability but also the possibility to use up to uh, 64 shares. So uh, very high security order. So uh, the general idea of the proof, the detailed proof is of course in the paper, but the general idea uh, works like this. Uh, we show that the comparison is T non-interferent in the probing model and Doing this, we uh, first identify all intermediate variables in the algorithm and sort them into groups, and then uh, continue simulating all of the elements in, in the group without using all of the input shares um, of any coefficients, and we use like a bootstrap approach to do this. Uh, so, uh, two remarks, the first is that the proof doesn't work if both input polynomials are equal, but uh, we show in the paper that this does not provide an advantage to the attacker. And also uh, that the simulation or the proof only works for prime moduli, so we cannot use a power of two modules. Now to the performance evaluation, first we implement the algorithm on a Cortex-M4 microcontroller. And this is the same platform that uh, was also used in the other implementations which we used in our benchmark. The implementation was done in assembly with uh, some optimizations. And we used the onboard uh, through random number generator uh, combined with rejection sampling to generate the required randomness. And these are the performance figures for New Hope. And uh, please note that all values include the time needed for randomness generation. Yeah, some of the numbers I showed earlier already, uh, we see in, uh, when we are using two shares, we are faster even than the first order only comparison provided by Oda et al. And uh, for higher orders, of course, this uh, comparison algorithm doesn't work, so we cannot provide any numbers there, but we can compare ourselves with the A to B conversion-based approach. And uh, as you can see, the performance gain is significant. So it starts out with a factor of 16 for two shares, and for five shares, we are all already almost 100 times faster. And uh, we also benchmarked the performance for different parameter sets, for example, for Kaiba um, 768 and LAC 192. And here we get um, performance improvements of a factor of 10 for two shares up to, again, 95 for five shares, depending on the scheme and, of course, the masking order. So regarding randomness consumption, um, as I said earlier, the uh, required randomness is independent on the number of shares. So um, if you see different figures here, this is because we used rejection sampling. So the um, actual number of random words 
is probabilistic. But um, yeah, as you can see in, in the table, this is uh, almost constant, independent of the masking order. And we see a reduction of a factor of 15 for uh, two shares on New Hope up to 275 for LAC at five shares. So the A to B conversion based approach needs 275 times more randomness when applied to LAC 192 at five shares compared uh, to our approach. Now to the practical security evaluation, um, we use the same Cortex M4 board as for the benchmarks. And um, we used a constant time version of our implementation. And this just means that we generate the randomness before the actual measurement. And this allows for easier alignment of the traces. And also we reduce the number of coefficients to four. So in the complete implementation for New Hope, we have 1,024 coefficients. But um, if we measure the complete comparison, the trace uh, gets very long and it becomes computationally prohibitive to perform a multivariate second order uh, TBLA. Um, and therefore we yeah, use this to reduce the trace length. Uh, the measurements were collected using an uh, EM probe, which was sampled with an oscilloscope at a sample rate of around 150 megahertz and with 8-bit uh, resolution. And the analysis metric we used is uh, fixed versus random t-testing with a significance level of 0 0.01. And we collected up to 1 million measurements for the analysis. So this is a sample trace, what it looks like. This uh, is the comparison of four coefficients. Um, yeah, it's rather noisy, but as you will see in the next slides, we get some interesting results. So this is the first order leakage of two versions of our algorithm. On the left, we see the two share implementation. So uh, this should guarantee first order security. And on the right, we see the three share implementation, which should give us second order security. And as you can see, the threshold is not uh, reached for any of those implementations. So they appear to be first order secure. This is the uh, second order multivariate evaluation of our two share implementation. So again, we have four coefficients and this time with two shares. And in order to uh, yeah, make this plot more visible, we highlighted the T values which cross the threshold uh, with red color. And as you can see, and as is expected, we have several um, multivariate leakage points. So that this means that if um, yeah, the leakage of these points is combined, it reveals information about the uh, sensitive uh, data. And again, this is expected because this is only the two share implementation, which should be first order secure, but should not be second order secure. And uh, for the three share implementation, the plot looks like this. So again, if the leakage crosses the threshold, it's highlighted in red. And um, yeah, as we don't have any combination of points which produce high leakage, there is no highlight. And we conclude that there is no um, multivariate second order leakage in our three share instantiation of the algorithm. So to conclude this presentation, we propose a new higher order masking algorithm for the comparison function in the Fujitsuaki Okamoto transform. Um, has a complexity which is proportional to the number of coefficients and the masking order. Um, so it's linear in the masking order in comparison to the previous A to B based approach, which is quadratic in the masking order. We also provided a theoretical security proof of our algorithm, 
and uh, practical second order test vector leakage assessment analysis, uh, which you just saw. So in future work, um, we would like to see if it's possible to extend this algorithm to all, also work with non-prime Q because several of the um, lattice-based key encapsulation mechanisms use power of two moduli. It would be also interesting to see if our side channel countermeasure can be combined with fault injection countermeasures. Yeah, thank you for listening to this talk.